So, let's talk about Detroit. Because I know so many Red Wings fans are out there talking about the Anthony Mantha Verona trade and talking about how it was a big highway robbery for Detroit. And yes, I was on that boat too. And even though Anthony Mantha went out there for the Capitals and scored himself a very nice goal, played with Backstrom and Oshie, which are two players that are probably better than anybody he has played with in the past few years, no big deal. No big deal. It's fine. Anthony Mantha, I hope the guy has a great career. Everybody in Detroit watching this guy all hopes the same as well. Hopefully Mantha becomes the player that the Capitals want him to be and not the player that the Detroit Red Wings were just super disappointed with because they had their own expectations of him as well. It's just night in, night out. We wouldn't really see that come to fruition. But disregarding Anthony Mantha, I wanted to talk about the return and how exactly things came about with the details and the players coming back, because when it comes to Jacob Verona specifically, there's a very interesting chronology about this, because Verona coming over to Detroit, along with, of course, the draft picks and Richard Ponick as well, is one of the more interesting pieces of this entire trade deadline that we had to deal with here. So... Let's go over in order and talk about Jacob Verona and who exactly he is as a hockey player. Because when it comes to how exactly he developed in the Washington Capital system, he was drafted by them a long time ago, back in the 2014 NHL entry draft. I mean, a long time ago. It's not that long ago. It was only, oh my goodness, seven years ago? Dude, that's crazy. But either way, he was drafted in the 2014 draft, a top 20 pick. When he was drafted, he was one of the top scorers in the J20 Super Elite, which was the league for U20 competition in Sweden. Because he was so good, he was playing in the SHL too, where he didn't get any points, but hey, that's fine. He was 18, 17 years old, playing in the top men's league in the country. Hey, that's not bad at all. Actually, just playing there is a good thing in itself. And as he developed in the SHL, in the AHL, he eventually became one of the top players in the Hershey Bear system and eventually a very capable NHL caliber forward in 2017-2018. In that season, he broke through in the playoffs, scoring 8 points in 23 games as the Capitals won themselves the Stanley Cup, had himself 27 points in 73 games, played 13 goals, 14 assists, and next year is when things really started to kick off properly for Verona. He became a 20-goal guy, he got 47 points in 82 games played, and the year after that he scored himself 50 in 69 games played, 25 goals as well. In the playoffs he kind of disappeared, and that's something that a lot of Washington Capitals fans will be very wary about when talking about Jacob Verana and his overall development with the Capitals, but this year things kind of took a little bit of a back seat. He got 25 points in 39 games played, yes, 11 goals, yes, that is great, especially with the fact that he was actually playing third-line minutes. Anthony Manta, while getting a similar half-a-point-a-game stat line with the Detroit Red Wings, was given a lot of time, because we know Manta was one of the best talent players on the Red Wings the entire past few years. He wouldn't always show off that he was one of those, but we all kind of knew in our hearts, when Manta wanted to be good, this guy could be incredible, an unstoppable force out there in the ice. With Vrana, he wasn't really given the ice time this season, and the fact that he was an RFA to be later on made things difficult with how exactly the Capitals would go out there and project a potential return. Here's what Brian McClellan, the Capitals GM, says about Jacob Vrana and why exactly they traded him. He said that he saw a frustrated player in Vrana. The body language he would showcase on the ice was read as frustrated. The team gave it time to try and work it out, and they ended up moving on. There was a tugging war between the coaching staff and the staffs that have had him and the way he was playing, McClellan says. He also mentioned that Verona's RFA status with arbitration rights is another factor in the trade. He's got some good numbers with us this year, and projecting that salary, we actually get cost certainty with Manta, so we know what that contract is going to be. That played a factor in it. Yes. Now, what exactly does that mean, cost certainty? Well, pretty much... Anthony Mantha is making X amount of money for X amount of years. We know how much he is going to cost in the next few seasons. With Ferrana, because he is an RFA, they don't know how much he is going to demand, how much the calculations are going to be for the arbitration rights, because as we said, he's out there getting points this year. 25 points in 39 games played is not bad. Let's do the math on that. 25 divided by 39 multiplied by 82, that's a 52-point pace, which would be... A career high, I mean, it would have matched his production from last year, which he did in 
fewer games. So, I mean, not really a career high, but still really good, right? Especially for a guy who's in his mid-20s who's looking to be entering his prime and who just had a very grueling path to get into the NHL. All those years in Sweden, all those years in the AHL, developing up and down. Now he's here. But now he's frustrated. So, the insecurities with the contract and the type of guy you have out there in the ice, his own personal opinion on how he feels he is progressing within the ranks of his hockey team, all that stuff combined into why McClellan was able to go out there with Steve Eiserman on the phone and say, yeah, okay, if we get Mantha, you're getting Verana. And Ponick, and a first, and a second. Before we finish things off, though, I wanted to go over Elliot Friedman's 31 Thoughts article. Because he published this one after the trade deadline, it's kind of the tying up of the loose ends of what happened on Monday's crazy event. And we have ourselves some thoughts here on number 15 and number 16 that I wanted to go over because they relate to the Red Wings and Verona and the Mantha trade and all that. This is purely my opinion and not anything I've heard of, but coming out of the enormous Detroit-Washington deal, does anybody ask Steve Eiserman about Larkin? One of the reasons Mantha and Verona were traded was due to frustration with their play, and recently, in Verona's case, his own consternation at the way he was being used. But... Another key factor is that the Red Wings feel their rebuild will take longer than originally predicted. Now, we have ourselves some more stuff talking about Larkin. I'm not going to talk about Larkin here. We can make another video about that if you want to, but... Hey, if you really want to see it, let me know in the comments if you want to talk about trading Larkin. But for Verona himself specifically... The way that it's so openly expressed that his own consternation at the way he was being used was a factor as to why he was traded, and that frustration boiled over into what ultimately led him getting sent over to Detroit. We also had another thought here, number 16, talking about Verona 2, one story about the man. The Washington Capitals woke up on June 5th, 2018, with a 3-1 lead in the Stanley Cup Final. There were two days off before Game 5, and all regulars were excused from practice. Vrana was the only one to go out and skate. I asked him why, and he said it was because he needed to practice scoring. He was 12 games without a goal at that time, and then he scored the first goal of the cup-clinching game number five. It's always been about that extra edge. Now, when it comes to that specific aspect of it, a lot of Capitals fans were quick to point out that this guy does disappear in the playoffs, and he is streaky to the extent that if you're really expecting a consistent player who can consistently go out there, score you a goal every two games, get you an assist every, I don't know, every two-thirds of a game, and continue that pace so, especially in the playoffs, you're not going to get that in Verona. But you know what? My response to that is, I mean... Have you been watching Anthony Mantha, dude? I know he went out there and scored himself two points for the Capitals in his debut, but trust me, if you're a Capitals fan concerned for the well-being of Detroit fans by telling them, yeah, okay, Verona's not really the most consistent guy, yeah, don't worry, we're fine. I appreciate your concern. It's just dealing with Anthony Mantha on the ice for the past few years... I'm pretty sure Red Wings fans know what inconsistent looks like, so even though... This kind of looks like a match made in heaven because you have two inconsistent guys getting traded for one another who might be somewhat frustrated with their situations. I think it was a lot more evident with Verana that he was in a more frustrated position, especially with the deployment, the third line minutes and all that not being played in the right way under the Washington Capitals system as of late. But again, with Mantha, it was kind of different because we always knew he could be good. It's just we didn't see it a lot. So... I mean, we'll see how exactly things go down a few years down the line. But at the end of the day, hey, Verana and Manta are two, in my opinion, similarly calibered tiered players in the NHL. And when you have other assets attached, like a first, like a second, like a legitimately okay roster forward in Richard Ponick, I'm going to say okay, not good, not great, just okay. You have yourselves a deal that, in my opinion, looks like a very heavy Detroit Red Wings win, still even, but... Again, we still need to see if Mantha can become a superstar like we know he can be. If Mantha does become a point-per-game player all the time, playing with Backstrom and Oshi and all that, then, hey, congrats. Awesome to the guy. That's the kind of guy that you give up a first and a second and Jacob Verona for, you know? That's kind of how it goes down. If it does go down like that, then amazing. But I want you to talk to me in the comments. If you made it to the end of this video, comment down below Lions for a chance to be featured in the next Red Wings discussion-based video. I'm saying Lions because Jacob Verona played for the Lincoln Pang Hockey Club in the SHL, and that logo is a lion. So, I mean, it's easy to make the connection, right? Talk to me in the comments what you think about Verona, the entire reason he got traded, the Mantha trade, and all the stuff that we talked about here. Also, Lions, if you made it to the end of this video, for a chance to be featured in the next one. I hope you enjoyed this. Vitaash Rolls 99.
and bye.